Disaster Ethics, the subject of a conference in Kansas City, December the 7th, 2011, and we have with us one of the planners of the conference, Dr. Michael Weaver of St. Luke's Health System. Uh, Dr. Weaver, why did you feel like it was important to have a conference on disaster ethics? Well, I think it's a huge issue. I mean, we realize there are going to be more disasters as time goes on, and we really haven't addressed the issues well, both in a, as a public health policy as well as through training for our medical and healthcare professionals. You have been involved uh, on the ground with a number of different disasters, including Hurricane Katrina, I understand, and I wouldn't be surprised if you headed down to Joplin for for that activity as well, but you've been around at a lot of different ones. What have, what have you found to be any kind of a common denominator for the, the medical professional in dealing with the situation? Well, I actually uh, had an opportunity to participate in the Hyatt disaster, and that was one of the first disasters where we even used a triage system. So, so we've improved on that as time has gone on, and now I think it's important to focus on these ethical principles and really incorporate that into our disaster planning. Uh, we typically do drills a couple times a year with medical issues around disasters, whether they be tornadoes or, or floods, et cetera. But we really haven't interjected ethical issues that come up in taking care of patients, uh, not only on an individual basis, but again with disasters on a, on a broader basis in a community response, et cetera. What were some of the ethical issues that you saw presented in some of the presentations today? from uh, Dr. Wackerly, who was involved with the Hyatt Regency disaster here in Kansas City and others. What were some of the ethical issues that uh, popped out at you? Well, I think it's important. I think one of the things that really came out is how not only do we have to look at the ethical and bioethical issues about the patients we take care of, but also ourselves. I mean, the dilemmas of uh, do you respond to the hospital or do you respond to your family when an ethical or disaster situation takes takes uh, occurs, which takes precedent, and how do you make those moral and ethical decisions about patient care? And of course, when you look at providing resources, how do you determine who gets a precious resource? Uh, uh, clearly, one of the issues is socioeconomic status uh, seems to play a role, and uh, when, ex when disasters occur, um, that uh, disparity in resource allocation actually increases. And we know that uh, we're having an increase in the number of people that are falling below the poverty line. So again, unless we start focusing and getting data and looking at these issues, the disparities in health care that occur around disasters will also increase. You talk about disparities. You spent some time at Hurricane Katrina, the aftermath in New Orleans. Going in, you had probably one set of beliefs or understandings of what was involved with that, but then experiencing that, mm -hmm. how did you come back different? Well, how, do you, how did you start thinking differently after going through the experience of Hurricane Katrina? Well, it certainly broadens your perspective about emergencies. I mean, I've, I've been in emergency healthcare for 30 years, and I've, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, tragic circumstances. Uh, I will tell you, after 30 years though, um, I, two weeks after coming back from Katrina, I just started crying and I, and I didn't realize what was going on and I actually um, experienced post-traumatic stress. And so I, you know, it was surprising being in the emergency room and, and seeing tragedies for 30 years that I, I hadn't had that, quite, that, that sort of emotional response. But um, that's in a more controlled environment. When you're at a disaster, it's an uncontrolled environment. Um, uh, it's, your, your comfort zone is destroyed, your, your expectations are changed, and so uh, your emotions are really out there and you want to do the right thing, you, you feel energized to do the right thing, and then you realize uh, in many circumstances you're, you're, you're helpless without those traditional resources you've had at your disposal. So it's, it's, it's a life altering and changing um, experience. You use the phrase comfort zone. And one of the issues brought up today during the conference was the idea of compromising on care. Is there a comfort zone around the issue of compromising on care uh, during a disaster? Well, I think that typically as clinicians, we're used to having to make decisions on a on a one on one basis. And then when you look at disasters, you're looking at spreading resources out uh, to help to do the greatest good. So. Um, that's something that most of us have not had any training with formally or informally. So this is another reason why I think conferences such as these are important to get the word out, to get more education and to provide um, um, a context for things we'll have to deal with in the future. 
Dr. Michael Weaver is with St. Luke's Health System in Kansas City, Missouri. Thanks for your time and good luck. Thanks, Laurel.